Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about how to identify weak players and how to identify strong players at the table, okay? I'm gonna draw this chart, and this chart is going to help us identify the general four types of players that you're gonna see at the tables, okay? Now, remember, this is not gospel. This is not um, gonna be permanent. So don't be so literal about this, but you're gonna find that this is generally true about people. Plus, people can change, and, and it kind of depends on what mood they're in. So this is really representing more of a play style than it actually is representing how they are always. So if you look up here, there's gonna be aggression, and there's gonna be the passive kinds of players, okay? One thing that all great players have in common is that they are all aggressive. In poker, you're not gonna have the best hand often enough to be profitable. You can't just wait around and actually have the best hand all the time. You actually need to be able to push people around and kind of fight, fight your way through some of those bad cards and kind of push some of the better hands out of the pots. Um, on this side, we're gonna talk about ranges, okay? Which means, what are the variety of combos of hands that people could play and uh, in what positions, okay? So you have loose range and you have tight range. So we're gonna start first with quadrant one, okay? Think of these people, I like to call them the crocodiles, okay? I'll explain, <laughs> I'll explain the crocodiles in just a second. Um, but these are the aggressive loose players. And these are the players that have extreme aggression and they have a wider range. You wanna be careful because these players play a lot more hands than maybe a tight player would play. And you, you gotta really be very deliberate with the pots that you choose to be in with them. And you really need to kind of be able to think ahead or else you're just going to get smashed. And sometimes you're going to make a, a call, they're going to go all in, you're going to call them and they have the nuts. So you got to, you got to really like pick your battles and you really got to be careful with these kinds of players because they're dangerous. These are the crocodiles. They're aggressive. They're wild. They're, they're not scared. They're willing to put their whole stack in and, and bluff you. And, and they have lots of different types of combos of cards. The other types of player that is good and strong that you need to be really careful for are the aggressive tight players okay now these players are also very aggressive they're willing to bluff they're willing to push you're not seeing cards for free very often with these kinds of players they're they're forcing you to make decisions with with your chips you're not going to see a lot of cheap stuff it's not easy but the difference about these players or they play a tighter range, meaning they only play like stronger cards. So um, even if they have a bluff, they're usually bluffing with big cards. Like, these are the type of players that will raise with ace king suited, but if the flop comes out queen high, they're not gonna just check and fold. Like these, are, these players will like keep betting, just like they would with aces or a set of queens. They're gonna, they're gonna bet and they're gonna, they're gonna freaking push people around because they have strong cards. So you need to be very careful against these players because they are capable of bluffing. They're just a lot more like tight. So these people are more like a cougar. They're gonna follow their prey, they're gonna study their prey out, and they're gonna wait for the prey to have a weak moment, and then they're gonna freaking pounce. They're gonna pounce on you and they're gonna be deadly. And that's like what aggro tight player plays like. They're, they're more precise, they're gonna fold, fold, and when they, and whenever they decide to come in, they're like, raise, big raise, all in. It's kind of like they're sitting back, sitting back like a boxer and sitting back and they don't throw a lot of punches, but when they punch, they punch hard and they come in real hard and they're not gonna slow down once they're in the pot. So they're a lot more like raising or folding. They're very deliberate, very scary to mess with. If you got attacked by either a crocodile or a cougar, they're both pretty scary. <laughs> I don't know what I'd prefer, you know? I'd probably, I'd probably pick a cougar. Anyways, these are the types of players that you're gonna sit at your table and you're gonna notice very quickly um, 
which players are a crocodile and which players are cougars and then which players are not. We're gonna now talk about the weak players. I, I really want to emphasize that this side of the chart is the strength. And you wanna really try to gravitate your game toward this style of play. And you're gonna see very quickly that this is where the weak players go. And this is where all the money is to be made over here. So this side, this is the passive loose player. And the passive loose player, this is the player that is the easiest to make money from. These are probably the worst players on the table. And they are probably the most profitable player to play against. Um, these are more profitable to play against than even maniacs or the crazy action tables, because these are people that are willing to put in a lot of money. They like to limp, they don't raise. They're just gonna limp, and they limp with hands like king seven, jack six, queen nine off suit, 10 nine off suit. Their mindset is this, I just, it's only $2 to see a flop, it's only $3 to see a flop. They don't realize you're not paying $2 to see a flop, you're giving $2 to show how weak you are to the aggressive players, they're gonna realize, oh, this guy's not a tough player. This guy likes to gamble. This guy wants to put in $2 to just hope he hits a flop. He's not playing with purpose. He's, he put, he's coming to gamble. He's just limping. He's not even raising with his bad hands. He's just kind of hoping he can play a bad hand and hit a hand. That's like the weakest style. And frankly, it almost frustrates me to see it happening all the time because I just feel bad for these players. They're playing so weak. They're limping, and the thing is they just limp, and then you raise and they call. And they just kind of like limp and they call and they call one more time and then they fold. They just limp and call, and they're just playing bad cards. They're not, they're not playing with purpose. The way you play against them is you play for value. One lesson against these guys. These guys are calling stations, okay? So... They will come in to a pot with ace seven off suit, a horrible hand. Okay, that ace seven off suit, and they flop top pair, they flop a pair of aces. Um, they're not going to fold. Okay, so don't like if you kind of know that they if you can realize that they hit top pair, don't 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 bluff them because they will call you down all the way. <laughs> they rarely fold if, if ever. Like, it's like so rare that you see a, a passive lose a, a quadrant three player fold top pair. They're so, they're just calling stations. But when you have a hand, if you flop a set, or if you flop top pair ace king and you flop top pair top kicker, bet the flop, bet the turn in, bet the river, because they won't fold. They're just gonna call you the whole way and they're willing to put their whole stacks in with top pair bad kicker. You don't really need to worry about them raising you. You don't need to worry about them bluffing at you very often or um, playing back against you. You get to show down very easily and you get to kind of like, bluff a lot in spots where they kind of miss the flop and they kind of have to just fold. Very easy to play against. You don't win by playing like this. What I would urge you and challenge you to do is try to really honestly analyze your game and, and find out which of these categories you're in and then really try to gravitate towards more of the aggressive style. Quadrant three is the sloth. So I'm gonna put it here and then circle it. They are slow. They're lazy, they don't raise a lot, they're not aggressive, and they just kind of move around, and if you kind of get aggressive at them, they'll usually kind of fold. The sloth, kind of slow, sloppy, not tough, not scary, sloth. Obviously, quadrant four is gonna be the passive type player. And they're very similar to the passive loose player. The main difference is that they play strong cards. They also limp. They like never raise um, unless they have like very strong cards. And when they have very strong cards, you're gonna know because they, they, they raise and they raise big. So they're very easy to play against. They, they, they play very, very straightforward. And they're, they're the type of players that's gonna limp in late position. They're gonna limp in with ace jack suited and then the button raises and they call and they the flop is queen high and they miss the flop and then they check fold. That's these kind of players. These are the players you do, you can kind of, you can bluff at them a lot because they're just so wimpy. 
I call them the bluffables because <laughs> they, they're just so wimpy and they just kind of, they're scared to put money in the pot and they just kind of limp in and they barely call and they just fold. They're, they, they can't wait to fold. They just, they're just such wimps. They want to like let things go and they don't really put money in the pot unless they have the nuts. You can kind of, you can bluff at them. You can kind of bully them a little bit. They are not calling stations. I will say if they do um, re-raise you, like you raise and they re-raise you, you should be very cautious. In fact, I would dare say, I, I would, you probably want to consider folding pocket jacks. If you call it pocket jacks, you really should realize like you need to hit a set of jacks or straight or something because they very easily could have aces or kings or queens there. Just these are, these are very straightforward players and you can kind of bully them a lot. Um, they do play a lot better cards though. They play good cards. They just don't really raise very much and they just kind of check call and check fold and very, very timid, very passive. These people are the sheep. Very sweet, very soft, and they kind of follow around and they just kind of fold. Like they're, they're scared. There's chickens. They're, they, they, well, they're not chickens, they're sheep, <laughs> but they, they kind of run from danger. Okay. So you have the crocodile, you've got the cougar, you've got the sloths, you got the sheep. Now, <clears throat> generally speaking, be a one against the four and be a two against the three. If you're playing super aggro and, and loose, if you're playing like a crocodile, you want to be kind of careful for these people because you're going to be bluffing at them a lot and they're going to be calling you. So you got to be really careful. You might want to try to adjust your style. And generally speaking, you kind of go crossways. So to beat the, the, the quad or three, you kind of play a little bit more, a little more tight because they're playing really crappy cards. So they're playing such bad cards that all you gotta do is play, play uh, better cards than them and be aggressive. So they're gonna kinda call you with worse cards and just, they're not gonna be aggressive, they're just gonna check and call and check and call and you kinda like push them around with better cards and you're, you're really gonna get a lot of value from them. They don't have strong enough cards to beat you often enough. So that's really how you're gonna battle them. Now to battle passive tight players, you're gonna really wanna loosen up because they're so they're folding so easy. They're just playing such wimpy, like they're playing so so soft and passive that you can afford to kind of loosen up your range, be willing to play a few more cards than you normally wouldn't play, and be a crocodile. Keep in mind, like I said, this is all more of a style than it is like a permanent label or a symbol on a person as a player. Players can become better. I, you ultimately just want to be on the left side and you're constantly having to check your emotions. And I will say in the lower stakes, generally, what I would recommend is this style is um, the number two, the, the Cougars are really good for uh, small stakes and especially in Texas because there's just so many of these sloth players. So there's so many in Texas that it's just not worth bluffing in these spots and these small stakes. You just kind of wait around, you hit hands and you're aggressive with them and people call you. And it's, it's unbelievable. You literally just flop sets, you bet the flop, you bet the turn, you go all into the river and they just, they just call you down. They, they will just literally call you and they don't really have any idea why they're losing money. And it's just simply because they're playing crappy cards in these positions. If you're struggling to win right now, especially in Texas or like very like action-oriented small stakes games, um, I would really gravitate towards the, the Cougar style. And don't start trying to get fancy with a, the number one quadrant or crocodile style. <clears throat> but like I said, you want to kind of be able to change your game according to what you see the players doing and you see the table doing. So those are the four quadrants. Um, I'm going to have future videos on more specifics on each quadrant and like how to actually like protect yourself and then be able to take advantage of players' weaknesses in these categories. Good luck on the tables. Crush it. Good luck.